No problems? We'll, we'll see if I make it through the day, you know? Yeah. Like, uh, so before we start, I just want to know, how many people actually, how, how many people invest in crypto here? All right. This Half of your, the room. Look at that. This is your crowd. So Alex, for people who don't know Celsius, tell them about the network. You founded it in 2017. Sure, yeah. So, um, so you're familiar with banks, right? And we do everything banks do but the opposite, right? So banks charge you fees. We don't charge fees. Bank make a lot of money for themselves, don't give it to you. We make a lot of money for ourselves, but we give it back to you, right, as, as yield, right? We pay 8.8% .8 on your stable coins, on your dollars, right? Try to get that from your local bank. So I have another shirt called uh, Banks Are Not Your Friend, so uh, maybe I'll switch it in the middle yeah. in the interview just so, to communicate that. So just to recap, Alex, Celsius is giving 8.8% .8 return on stable coins. Alex, I'm gonna be honest with you, as a person, that, that just raises a little bit of a, an eyebrow for me. I mean, I'm sure people... Too good to be true, right? Too good to be true. So walk right. us through with how you're able to pull that off. So JP Morgan, this quarter, made $20 billion in profit. They can pay you 8.8%. They just don't want to, right? They don't have to. You give them your money for free. Anyone here, right? You, you, ever, you get a paycheck, you give it to your bank. They charge you fees. They don't pay you anything for it. Why are you doing that? That's like a bad marriage. That's like coming home and getting slapped a few times around and then say, okay, here's my paycheck. Yo, do it to me again. I love it. So that's the there is an alternative. I mean, most of us get used to the fact that there's no alternative to banking. But really, there is an alternative, right? Somebody who is acting in your best interest. Now you're going to say, well, I don't believe you. Why would you do this? This is my eighth startup, my third unicorn. I'm not doing it for the money. Right? I just got uh, sick and tired and I said, I'm not going to take this anymore. I'm going to take on the banks. Yeah. You know, no one else, anyone here willing to take on the banks? Few guys, okay. The same crypto, same guys that have crypto raising their hands. What about the rest of you? Anyone here is willing to take on the banks? Pick a fight with a bull in a ring. Here we go. There's one volunteer right there. All right, let's talk. <laughs> yeah, so Alex, do you really think banks are going to go away? They don't have to go away. We just have to w change their behavior, right? If all of the people tell me, how can you fight with the banks? The only reason banks have power is because we give them our money for free. If we stop giving the banks money, where are they going to get the money from? I don't know. So, but we all got to get together. Yeah. And if all of us get together and stop giving the banks free money, they will have to change their behavior. They're going to have to run after us and say, okay, you know what? How much is the machines keep paying you? 8% fine. How about five? How about six? How about seven? That's what we need to get to. So, but the problem is you've ran into some trouble here in New Jersey. We're some, not in trouble. We, some Texas, we, we, Alabama, you got some cease and desist. All these states said, just like you said, they all said, wait a second, this is too good to be true. Show us what you're doing. We showed them what we're doing. We showed them it's legal. We showed them that no, no government has ever given banks a monopoly. They just created a monopoly by buying all of the uh, community banks, all of the tr trust, trust, all of the small guys, and then they had no competition. Then they look at each other in the room and say, hey, how about 0.1% for all of our customers? Yeah, that sounds just right, right? 0.1%, we'll charge them 25% monthly fee and pay them 0.1%. So the fee is more than the interest of bail. And you still make a deposit. You get your next paycheck and you still give it to them. So we can't blame them. We have to blame us. Yeah. It's an abusive relationship and we're not getting out of it. So, but the problem right now is there's no federal regulations, right? There is. We've been following all the laws since 2017. We filed with FinCEN. We filed with the SEC. We, we do everything you're supposed to do. The issue is that the banks are whining, they're crying, they're complaining. And the regulars say, okay, 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 let me dig into this thing, find something these guys have done wrong so we can shut them down. That's what's happening. Yeah, so you're, you're am saying- Am I telling it the way it is or am Yeah, I, but no? you, you're looking for more, you want, you want the, more regulation, correct? You want kind of I the want role clarity of regulation. I don't want more regulation. I want clarity of regulation. I think what all of us are asking, it's not just me, right? It's Coinbase, it's everybody else. You know, we're managing $25 billion if we were a bank, we would be 
the 80th largest bank in the United States. Now, we paid $860 million in interest. That would make us one of the top 10 banks in interest payments in the United States. Yeah. So is that acting in the best interest of the people or is that not acting in the best interest of the people? So regulators are here. The government is here to represent our interests. The government is here to act on our behalf. If they want to shut this down, then all of you voted for the wrong people. Yeah. So, th so this 8.8% is obviously you can't maintain it. It's, it's been dropped down to four at one point, when, as high when, as 12. When we launched in 2017, that's exactly what people told me. And they said, well, you have 25 million, you can pay 8%. Wait until you have a billion. So actually when we launched, we were 6%. We went all the way up to actually 12%. Now it's 8.8, .8. it's got down a little bit. But the interest that we pay has nothing to do with what we decide. The interest we pay has to do with how much people are willing to pay for loans. And it's the true value of money. The Federal Reserve tells us that the value of money is zero. But the market, the DeFi market, the CeFi market, right, decentralized finance, centralized finance, tells us that the value of money is 8.8%. So you tell me who is the real co economy and which one is the fake economy? Is, yeah. uh, again, how can it be that banks make record, all time, record profit and interest rates are zero, they're paying us zero? How can those two equations uh, resolve? So all we're saying is, no, the true value of money, JP Morgan has a return on capital of 16%. They can afford to pay you half of that. Why aren't they giving you any money? Are you complaining? Anyone here filed a complaint with JP Morgan? How about Citi? Anyone? Why? Right? If I punched you in the face, would you file a complaint? These people are stealing from you, taking money out of your pocket. You're working hard for it, taking money out of your pocket. You're doing nothing about it. If I came to your pocket and stole $20, would you just walk away? That's what's happening every day in your relationship with your bank. So, Unbank yourself. So, <laughs> there you go. So, Alex, there's there's eleven thousand. There, there's so many cryptocurrency coins. There's eleven thousand tokens. There's dozens of staple coins. Which ones do you offer on your like? Do you accept on your platform? So, we, unlike Coinbase and many other people, we are not trying to sell you stuff, right? We're not. Other people try to sell you stuff. They charge you commissions. They want you to trade, transact, our model is the opposite. Our model basically says, look, sit on your hands, don't do anything, it's called huddle, right? Hold on to dear life, don't do anything. Just hold these coins, they'll be increasing in value and your money is gonna work for you instead of you working for your money. So we do all the hard work, you just have to sit on your hands. Is that a fair deal? I'll do all the hard work, you guys sit on your hand and earn 8.8%? Anyone buying in? Yeah. A few hands, same hands. Come on, guys. What about the rest of you? So, but one what more. What, I want one more over there on the in the crowd. But what what coins? I mean, you have th over three hundred million dollars invested in cryptocurrencies. Where are you invested? You're talking I, about my personal money, right? Yeah, I, I don't think my wife wants me to talk about it. Where is it? You know. She's okay with it. Uh, no, because I think the biggest confusion is everybody. I'm the wants, largest yeah. user of Celsius Network. Basically, I built this. And then a million people showed up, 1.15 million actually, the latest number, and said, hey, can we get a seat on the bus right next to you? You're paying yourself 8.8%. Can we get the same thing? Sure. This bus has plenty of room on it, right? So this is, this is not about, uh, uh, and again, now we have 100 competitors. There's 100 companies that said, oh, this looks like it works. Let's copy it. I love it because the more competition there is, the faster the banks are going to have to cough up all the cash. Right? So, you know, this week, Stop flying yeah. private. Stop giving themselves giant bonuses, you know? So Compound Labs was uh, big news this week. You know, that their hundred, $162 million upgrade bug, having all that cryptocurrency yep. for grabs. I mean, do you worry about something like that? I mean... We don't have any bugs, you know? I use RAID. I don't have any bugs. Not, look, I, I have 530 people, right, on the team. Our, our security department is larger than the teams you're talking about. Their entire team is smaller than just my security department. The people actually make sure that the code is clean, that the testing has been done. They do uh, all of the you know, uh, pen testing you know, to make sure that the code is, is, is safe. So 
you have to have that. Like, so a lot of the small projects do have issues, do have problems, but uh, again, we're managing 25 billion, we build the largest moat. Hackers come see the moat we've built and they say, too hard, I'm just gonna go over there. And they break into the, the, uh, the next guy. So uh, almost everybody else got hacked, I agree with you. Uh, but banks get hacked every day, you just don't know about it. You should do a scoop about that, like just run that story of how you know, all the major banks have hundreds of millions of dollars being stolen from them. Most banks, by the way, on their balance sheet has 2% dedicated to just theft. I don't know if you know that. Yeah. Every yeah. year. I'm sure it's out there. So do you think, are cryptocurrencies gonna be used as currency? What, do you, what are your thoughts? I'm not a believer that cryptocurrencies are a form of payment. Uh, let's take today, right? Bitcoin is up 10%. Let's say this morning you bought coffee over here. Well, it's a free, but over there, and you paid with Bitcoin. And two hours later, now that coffee cost you 10% more. Or you, you did the trade with Elon, Elon Musk, right? He gave you a Tesla, you gave him a Bitcoin, and suddenly the Bitcoin is worth 100,000. You could have bought two Teslas. Do you like driving that Tesla, or do you want to go and get a refund? So, so Bitcoin is not for consumption. Everything about Celsius is about you ending up with more coins. Don't use them on your credit card. Don't use them to buy things. Borrow against the asset. The richest people in the world don't sell their Facebook stock or Tesla stock. Uh, uh, the CEO of Amazon, is he selling his stock or is he borrowing against the stock to buy all of his homes and everything else? So you want to be smart. You want to let the asset appreciate. You want to borrow against it. We give loans with 1% uh, uh, APR, right? 1% per year interest. So, so you see more of a store of value? Store of value. Look. 76% of all the dollars that ever existed in history were printed since 2008. 76%. Okay? Do, so all these dollars in your, in your pocket are losing their value like this. It's not that Bitcoin is going up. It's that the dollar is crashing and you just don't understand it. Yeah. So, so Bitcoin is up 9 million percent. It's the best performing asset in history. Why? Because the dollar our golden goose is being basically torn apart by our government and by our Federal Reserve. That's what's happening every day. Now, is your salary going up? Are your, your expenses are going up, right? Everything you, you do is going up. Your salary is not going up. So we, we, we used to be you could finish the month with one person, right? One person in the household needs to work. You could get a home, you could get a car. Today, two people, can, two parents can work full time and have a side job and not finish the month. So how are we gonna resolve that? Printing more money? So if you wanna have any kind of protection, any kind of, uh, um, you wanna detach yourself from the US dollar, right? You wanna take 10, 20% of your assets and put them in something that is not dollar denominated. All right, that's what I've done. I take, I take in, I'm a rich guy, right? I said, I'm not trusting this dollar thing. I'm gonna take a few hundred million dollars and put them into crypto. Yeah, and are you still, do you still have money in the bank, or are you just completely done with banks? No banks. No banks. No. Yeah. I have real estate, I have other things, but... Uh, so, are, do you, are, are staple coins a security? I know you got... I'm not a lawyer. I don't know. I, all, I, all I know is that um, we, we support 13 different stable coins. I have three different law firms telling me they're not securities. If the head of the SEC wants to tell me it's a security, great. I'll, I'll change my process and behavior. Basically, if they're securities, then the average person here who's not an accredited investor will not be able to get that yield, will not be able to earn 8.8%. Now, is that good or is that bad? Now, let, let me just dig into that because it's very important. When you give your money to your bank, what do they give you back? Do you get a, do you get a, a, a U.S. Treasury? Do you get a gold? What do you get? An IOU. They give you a piece of paper that says, we owe you $10,000 or $5,000, whatever it is. That's all you get from the bank. If the bank goes out of business tomorrow, they, they have no liability to you. Now, when you buy a stable coin, by law, they have to buy U.S. Treasuries. For example, Paxos, 92% U.S. Treasuries, 8% cash. So you tell me what is a better deposit, putting it with your bank and getting an IOU or putting it with a stable coin and getting... 92% U.S. Treasuries. So you have to understand that, right? Now, 
the regulators call it this, call it that. It doesn't matter. The question is where are you storing your money? Are you storing your money where it's generating yield or are you storing your money where they charge you fees to, to store your money and they don't pay you anything for it? So that, look, banks have, when I came to this country 30 years ago, banks paid 7% interest. Some of the older guys here remember that. What happened to that? Why aren't we paid 7% interest? Anyone fighting for that? That's all I'm fighting for. I'm just saying enough is enough. And I'm a rich guy. I don't need it. I don't need that interest. I'm fighting for you. I'm not fighting for me. So what's, the biggest, what's your biggest hang up right now? What's causing you the most stress as you build your company? I can't find enough people to come and work for us. I already found 500, over 500, but we just can't hire them fast enough, right? So uh, crypto is still like a niche. It's still something that's considered a, a, like fuzzy logic. It's, I don't know if it's real or not. I'm not going to risk my career. This guy is a little weird, you know, like, uh, well, it's my third unicorn, okay? Yeah. Uh, any of you guys use uh, WhatsApp? Or, uh, or Skype, that's voice of IP. Who invented voice of IP, do you know? This You're just guy. using it. In 1994, I wrote the patents for that, built the first yeah. systems. Here are Bell Labs, not too far away from here. I worked with Bell Labs, AT&T, launched it, then brought it worldwide. The phone companies used to have the power. Back in 1994, you wanted to call your relative overseas, $3 a minute. What do you pay when you call them now? Zero, right? We took the power from the phone companies. We gave it back to the people. Can we do that with banks? Anyone votes for that? Same hands. No, here, I got a few more hands. Look at that. Yeah, he, eight startups, six kids, 50 eight patents. Eight startups, six kids. 50 yes. patents. So listen, the biggest thing <sighs> I get. I'm tired. We got, we got 11,000 coins out there. Who's, what's, what's gonna be the winner? I mean, that's everybody wants, I mean, I know a lot of young kids, it's their let's get rich quick kind of thing, so. Look, right now it's a, it's a bull market and everybody thinks that they're a genius. No matter what uh, number on the roulette you put your coins on, you, you win a dozen, right? That's not gonna last, so you can't just bet blindly and say, oh, Dogecoin, that looks cool. Look at this dog, it's so cute. Let me buy some of that. What is that? What is the Dogecoin? What is it good for, right? Nothing. You know the song? War, what is it good for? Nothing. It's exactly the same thing. Dogecoin, what is it good for? Nothing. So Bitcoin has utility. Okay. Ethereum has utility, right? Those are the things you have to focus on. Is there utility? Is there growing use case for the asset, is this going to replace a very large utility? The banking world is a utility, right? Is this new world going to replace the banking world? Are we going to transition from TradFi or traditional finance into CFi or DeFi? That's a decision you have to make. Okay, but if you could bet on one. One is Bitcoin. Uh, you know, like again, if, you, if you're going to take 20% or 10% of your assets, you should put half of that in Bitcoin. And the other half, you can go and put a little bit in whatever, in Dogecoin, whatever your, your favorite pets are, fine. Do you, do you, you invest know? in Dogecoin? No, never. I wouldn't touch it with a, with a stick. Okay. You know? All right. Well, we're up out of time. <laughs> there you have it. No. Unbank yourself. Yeah. Right? Look, the future is here. The future of finance is here. But you got to leave the past behind. If you're clinging on to the past, that bad relationship with the other banks, I can help you, you know? Let's leap into the future, let go of the past, and, uh, you know, buy some Bitcoin. There you have it, leap into the future. Thank you, Alex. Thank you.